this is just going to be a quick little video to show off something that I fixed up. I don't know how many of you guys watch the FranLab YouTube channel, but I noticed a power supply on her bench that looked really familiar. Made me think, hmm, I'm pretty sure I have one of those packed away somewhere. And it turns out I did. I've had this power supply for about 12 years or so. There was a bunch of these in a box of, uh, you know, free stuff for students to take and use at my uh, college. Uh, along with these binding posts, actually. And I had that stuff packed away for for years, you know, like I said, 12 years. Seeing this power supply in the background of her video made me, uh, you know, want to dig it out and set it up in a way that it could be used. Now, as received, the power supply was just this board, essentially, with uh, all the components populated and uh, nothing else. There's actually cut wires coming off of the uh, outputs and uh, also the AC input. I don't know what these were cut out of, but they are Jameco JE215A dual power supplies. You can see it has a copyright date of 1981. Now, somewhat surprisingly, you can actually still buy this power supply kit from uh, Jameco. It costs $30, although for a little bit more than $30 you can get a uh, complete power supply with case and all that used of course off of uh, eBay as you can see this supply is nothing fancy and it's uh, in some ways not the safest thing in the world especially the way I set it up this is a chunk of an acrylic bookcase I had cut up with the intention of making a clock case out of it but the acrylic cracked and I uh, just put it aside unfinished in frustration and it turned out that the power supply fit perfectly in there. It almost looks like I made it for this, but I did not. I did of course drill these holes to put in the binding posts though. Anyway, I'll plug it in. I haven't fit a uh, power switch or a fuse or anything like that to it. And maybe I will later if I decide to actually use this for something. It has two adjustable regulators, a LM317T positive voltage regulator and a LM337T negative voltage regulator. The one there has a date coded of uh, 8440, which I think is the 40th week of 1984. So I've got my DVM here. I'll just hook it up to the positive supply first. And yes, I know the plastic is still on there. You can adjust the voltage with this little potentiometer here. It's a little tricky to adjust. If I were to make a more serious power supply out of this, I'd probably replace it with a... Um, you know, potentiometer with a knob on it. This is a little bit of a pain in the neck. The max it goes up to is 18 volts. Although I think if you actually put a load on it at that high of a voltage, it would actually uh, sag a bit. And here's the negative supply. So that's set to negative 15 volts. That's of course uh, also adjustable. This is a linear power supply. The advantage of that is there's no switching noise, but the disadvantage is it's quite inefficient. They claim one amp from each output, but that's really pushing this thing pretty hard. It's got one amp uh, rectifier diodes, and it's just doing half-wave rectification. These things are rated for one amp max. Unfortunately, it has no meters or anything like that, so you'd have to hook up you know, an external meter like this to uh, measure the voltage and current. That's why I prefer my ready-built bench supply. Just to show it off a little bit, I'll uh, put the voltage down to 5 volts and hook up a, a lamp load onto it there. That's close enough. This is a uh, TS44 lamp that I attached wires to. It's a 6.3 volt lamp. So you can see it holds pretty steady with the load on or off. It's only dropping about a tenth of a volt. That's not bad. Now as this device is relatively modern, being from around 1984, I normally wouldn't necessarily bother replacing the filter capacitors, but I noticed that they're rated for 16 volts, and the voltage across the uh, two filter capacitors is actually around 20 volts, so that's uh, significantly over the maximum voltage rating. I wonder if these capacitors shipped with the kit, or if someone just used the wrong ones? 
But that was a power supply capacitor explosion waiting to happen, so I replaced them with these 25 volt rated caps that I uh, had on hand. If this was something I was going to use a lot, I would put a little bit better caps in there, but that's good enough for this. So there you see 19.87 uh, volts. Can't get it on the other one, but around the same, 19.55. So yeah, something to watch out for if you get one of these. May have uh, under-spec capacitors in there. Well, thanks for watching.